Hi, I'm Olympia Davison. I'm here today at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory with Dr. Ann Churchland. Where do you work here at Cold Spring Harbor Lab? I am in the neuroscience group at Cold Spring Harbor Lab, and my lab is kind of up the hill there. You can't really see it from here. And I've been here for about four, four years, and my lab is interested in understanding how the brain processes incoming sensory signals and uses them to guide behavior. Cool. <laughs> and so what's so special about working here at Cold Spring Harbor Labs makes it one of the best facilities in the world? Well, there are a lot of really special things about Cold Spring Harbor. It's really an amazing place to work. I think first and foremost, it's possible to do research here that, um, that you really couldn't do anywhere else in the world. We have the resources that make it possible to try risky new experiments that might turn out to be groundbreaking or might not work. Also, the group of people that's doing science here is fantastic. I have really wonderful colleagues that are inspiring and that help me to interpret my own work. I'll often go to a colleague and say, hey, I got this result and I don't know what to think about this and we'll, and we'll talk about it. Finally, one thing that's unique about working here is that it's in a really beautiful environment. Um, I never get tired of it. I, I like walking around here all the time. And in fact, almost every day, I'll take little walks around campus, just take a little break from my writing or working in the lab um, or designing analyses and just seeing the water and seeing the beautiful place kind of makes me feel um, invigorated and, and gives me inspiration to go back and work on the science. So what's the most interesting part of science in your opinion? The most interesting part is the discovery. And we make discoveries of all different sizes. Some discoveries we make are, are huge and are, are change the way that the world thinks about science. And those are of course incredibly exciting. But there are many smaller discoveries that are exciting day -to -day too. Day-to-day basis. Yeah, that can happen every day. You'll have a small problem in the lab and you'll find a way to work around the problem and you'll learn something new um, about, about a system that changes the way that you think about it. What were some of the most important mentors that you had and how were they helpful? I think my most important mentor was the uh, mentor who was my graduate advisor when I was a, a PhD student. Uh, and I think he was really an inspirational um, because he gave me challenging problems to work on and then kind of gave me the freedom to be able to kind of struggle with them and interpret them in my own way. Okay, great. And so, did you have any other challenges that you faced when you were, become, when you were getting your PhD or looking for a lab to work with? Science is full of challenges, so stuff doesn't work most of the time. <laughs> and so dealing with those challenges and dealing with the setbacks is a really major part of becoming a scientist. And not everyone can deal with setbacks and discouragement like that. It, you have to really um, learn how to do it. In your lab, if you face a challenge, what's a process or a protocol you have for trying to overcome it and figure out a solution? Yeah, I think, well, there are three things. So first of all, um, you have to be able to tolerate frustration. And second of all, you have to keep trying. I think people give up really easily. If you keep trying, you can get a lot done. Yeah. And the third thing is to rely on your friends. So I think whatever field you're in, especially if it's a challenging one, you need to have a friend you can go to at the end of the week and they'll say, oh, it's okay, your week was terrible, it's gonna be better next time. And, and people to encourage you to help you get through those difficult times. And so now a bit of a, about your outreach. Do you, how do you outreach to students or to the community outside this? Cold Spring Harbor Lab. Um, yeah, my lab does quite a bit of outreach. I do um, public lectures from time to time. I did one at the Secret Science Club in Brooklyn. It's a music venue that was attended by like I don't know, 500 people or something. It was a really big crowd. Um, and then I also do uh, a lot of work with local elementary school students. So I go into the schools and, and now bring groups of people, my colleagues, into the schools and the students dissect brains and make brain hats and learn about <laughs> visual illusions and different things. Oh, it's very cool. So what would be your advice for aspiring young scientists? Some qualities that you think are very important for them to have when coming into this field or science fields in general? I guess I would want them to know that being a scientist is an incredibly awesome career. And it has some really challenging aspects to it, but overall I feel like I come into the lab and, and just work on fun problems all the time. And we're at a time in history where science is proceeding at a really rapid pace. Neuroscience, molecular biology, you know, many branches of, of science. And so it's a really exciting time to be able to take part in that discovery. Thank you so much, Dr. Ann Church, and it was such a wonderful talking to you and wonderful to hear your input. Thank right, you. Thank you.